So we're going to analyze a couple of quadratic patterns. So the first thing we want to do is we have to make sure and realize that we know that the actual pattern is quadratic. So to sort that out, we do out our t-table. So our t-table, I've just shown it here. So we, what we have to do then with this t-table is we have to check that this is in fact quadratic. So to check that this is quadratic, we need to work out our uh, first differences, first of all. So from 10 to 18 is 8, from 18 to 20 is 10, and from 28 to 40 is 12. Now, because they are not constant, that means it's not linear. So we go one more time. So 8 to 10 is 2, and 10 to 12 is 2. Now, the fact that our second difference is constant means that we have a quadratic function. Now, this also gives us another piece of information here. Quadratic equations are all of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So the a tells us how many x squareds are in it. The fact that this is a 2 tells us we have 1x squared, i.e. if we have the second difference, we will get the value of a. Now that can help us to figure our pattern out because we know we need to get 1x squared in this pattern because we have that 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1, so I need 1x squared. So this gives me that a is 1. So the first thing I need to do, just from looking at it visually, if I see that the bottom of these are 2 tiles wide, 3 tiles wide, 4 tiles wide, and 5 tiles wide. And then let's have a look and see what the side of these are. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 high. This one is 6. This is 7. And this is 8. Now if I just draw a pattern here at the end, which is my nth pattern, and if we try and figure out a formula for this. Now we need to relate each number in the pattern to the side and the bottom. So 1 became 2 in pattern number 1. For pattern number 2, the bottom was 3. In pattern number 3, the bottom was 4. And in pattern number 4, the bottom was 5. So we should be able to see from that that every time we're adding 1 on to the pattern number. So for our nth pattern, we'll add on n plus 1. Now we do the same thing for the side. So 1 became 5. 2 became 6, 3 became 7, and 4 became 8. So what would we have to do there? Well, you should be able to see that if you add on 4 to each pattern number, you will get the length of the side. So that means we need to go n plus 4 for our pattern for the side. Now, when we put the two of these down then, because we're trying to get the area of this shape, because if you look at it, five twos are 10 to give us 10 tiles, six trees for the second shape give us 18 tiles, seven fours for the third shape give me 28 tiles, and eight fives for the fourth shape give me 40 tiles. So if I use the same logic, I'm going to get n plus one times n plus 4 for my nth shape here. Now I can go and multiply that out, which will give me n squared plus 4n plus n plus 4, which will give me n squared plus 5n plus 4. Now what I should be able to do, what you should see is that I had 1n squared, which is what I was expecting because my second difference was 2. So we'll provide the we'll use the same logic again to work this out. So the first thing we'll do again is we'll sort out our t table. So our t table is got there again by just counting up the tiles in each stage of the pattern. And now we're going to make sure that this is actually in fact a quadratic pattern. So what we need to do is we like we did in the last question, we're going to get our first differences. So that's plus five. Our next one is plus seven. 
and our next one is plus 9. Now again we notice that our first differences are not constant so it's not linear so we go again and we see that our first dif second difference sorry is plus 2. Now remember because our second difference is plus 2 if we have that we get 1 so that means I'm expecting 1x squared. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look at my shape and see can I see any kind of a pattern in it. Well I can see these rectangles as I look up upon them but I also have these two at the top and the bottom of each. So I'm just going to leave those out for a minute. Okay so I'll just mark those out and I leave those out. So what you should be able to see is that every shape has these two tiles one at the top and one at the bottom. Now they are constant so that will be the constant in the equation that we will need to maybe add on at the end. So the next thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to try and get the area of what's left. So if we look along the bottom we have three tiles wide here. This one is four, the next one is five and the next one is six. The next thing we'll do is we will look at along the side and we can see that stage one has a height of one, stage two has a height of two, stage three has a height of three and stage four has a height of four. Now it should be very easily able to see how the sides work out because what stage number matches perfectly with the number of tiles along the side. So if I draw my end shape I should have no problem seeing that I'm going to need n along the side. Okay, so I'll just write in my end shape and of course not forgetting it will also have a blue at the top and the bottom. So now I have my blue at the top and the bottom and I have my n for the side. So let's see what the bottom is going to be. Well I have uh, 3 on the first one, so 1 became 3, 2 became 4, 3 became 5, and finally 4 became 6. So what you should see is that each one of these is 2 up from the stage number. So that means my nth one will be 2 up from n, so it will be n plus 2. So now to get the area of the rectangles, all I need to do is multiply the two of these. So I have n times n plus 2 and not forgetting the plus 2 for the top and the bottom. So if I multiply this out, I'll get n squared plus 2n plus 2. Now what this means is when I look at it, I have 1n squared which is correct because my second difference was 2 which you can see in the green so from knowing that my second difference was 2 I should be expecting a 1n squared which is what I have. Okay so we'll analyze this one here so again to start us off we'll do our t table so our t table is stage 1 has 7 circles, stage 2 has 15, stage 3 27 and stage 4 43 so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my first differences. So my first difference there is plus 8. My next one is plus 12. And my next one is plus 16. And then moving on to my second differences, because the first differences are not constant, I get plus 4 and I get plus 4. Now, notice this is the first one that we've come across where the second difference is more than 2. So the second difference here is 4. So if we get the half of 4, we will get 2, which means that we're expecting 2 squared terms. Now, this should be a kind of obvious from the shapes, because if we just look, you can see that every shape has 2 of this pattern which is exactly the same size. So each one of them has two of this pattern, which is exactly the same size. And then what they all have is 
they all have these three extra ones together. Now, these three extra ones are in all of them, i.e. it's constant. So I'm just going to color those in in purple. So I have three of those in each. So that means at the end, we will need a plus three for those constant three. Now, the next thing is I'm going to look at any one of these shapes, either the bottom or the top one, and try and work out a formula for one of those. And then all we'll have to do is double that for the other. So if we look here along the bottom, this is one high, this one is two high, this is three high, and this is four high. And now we look along the bottom of the shape and we have it's two wide, three wide, four wide, and five wide. Okay, so if we try and put this together now for an end shape, okay, we'll need our three purples. And what we will see then along the side, stage one was one high, stage two was two high, stage three was three high, and stage four was four high. So then along the side, the end shape will obviously just be n high. So now let's look along the bottom and how are these worked out? Well, stage one became two, stage two became three, stage three became four, and stage four became five. So it should be clear from that that each one of the bottoms is one more than the stage number, which means I need n plus one. So to get the area of this part of the shape, I need n times n plus one. Now we must remember though, that we have two of those. We've one at the bottom and we've one on turned on its side as well. So each shape has two of these, so I'm going to put a two in front of this and also not forgetting the tree that I have at the end. Now, if I want to work all this out, I'm going to get two n times n plus one, which will give me two n squared. Two n by one is going to give me two n and I also have my plus three. Now remember, because I had a second difference of four and divided by two, I have two for my n squared terms. So I have two n squared terms and I can see that in the shape because I have two blue parts which are uh, shaded in. So I have twice of that shape. So that's why I have two n squared in this. Okay, now this shape is a little bit more difficult to analyze. So the first thing I'll do as usual is look at my T table. So if I look at my differences here, my first differences are going to give me from one to five is plus four, from five to 13 is plus eight, and from 13 to 25 is plus 12. And then for my second differences, I have, sorry, not plus, yes, sorry, plus four, and again, I have plus four. Now, what this means is I'm looking for two squared terms when I'm finished, because remember what we said, if we divide the second difference by two, it'll tell me I'm looking for two squared terms. Now, we're going to shade these in in a little bit different of a way in the, in, in, as opposed to the other ones. So if I shade like this, Now, what you should be able to see there is I've actually shaded a four by four square. I'm going to do the same in the next shape. And you will notice I've shaded a three by three square. In the next one, I'm going to shade a two by two. Now, again, then you will notice that there's nothing to shade in the last one with this pattern. I then go and fill in my ones that are blank and I have three, another three and another three. So that's a three by three square. 
I shade this one in and I have a 2 by 2 square. And I shade this one in and I have 1 square. Okay, now we will leave the first one for the time being because it can be quite difficult to know what to do with that one at the minute. But I suppose if you look, you could see from looking at the middle of the other ones, we start here on pattern four as a blue in the middle. Pattern three has a green in the middle. So pattern two has a blue in the middle. So pattern one, we would expect would have a green in the middle. Now, if we try and work out the patterns here, we said that we had a four by four square in green. This one we had a 3 by 3 square, we had a 2 by 2 square, and this one obviously in green we just have a 1 squared. Now if we go with the blue parts, we also have to add on to this 3 squared. In this one we're adding on 2 squared, and in this one we're adding on 1 squared, and obviously in this one we have no blue squareds. Now how will this work in terms of our end shape? Well, what you should notice is the green ones that we shaded are exactly the same as the pattern number squared. So that means we need n squared. We also need then to take care of our blue ones. And if you notice that they're all one less than the pattern number squared, which will be n minus one all to be squared. So the next thing then we can do with that is we can square it out. So we have n squared plus n minus 1 times n minus 1. So we get n squared plus n squared. So that's n by n, give me my n squared. n by minus 1, give me minus n. Minus 1 by n, give me minus n. And minus 1 by minus 1, give me plus 1. So then I get 2n squared minus 2n plus 2. And like we were expecting, we were expecting, because this is a 4, we were expecting 2n squared. Now important thing to note here, the n squareds don't have to be the same. So if you look at the last shape here, shape number 4, it was a 4 squared and a 3 squared. That doesn't matter as long as we find two square numbers in the shape. We're perfectly fine.